We've known for a long time that some families appear to have too many types of heart diseases uh, than occur in the general population. And that increase within a family often makes us think that there is a genetic underpinning or cause for their heart disease. And over the years, um, my research group has been very involved in finding these families and understanding um, what exactly is the cause of this increased uh, rate of heart disease within their particular family. We now know that what the cause is is a change in the DNA structure or the genes that encode important proteins that are made in the heart. So here at Brigham and Women's Hospital, we were one of the first uh, institutions around the country and indeed around the world to pioneer the diagnostic testing of patients who are at risk for genetic forms of heart disease, including hypertrophic and dilated cardiomyopathies. We can now, from a sim simple blood test, determine if an individual has one of these very damaging variants in their genetic material. And if they do, we can help them to recognize the likelihood that they will develop that condition or not. And furthermore, we can intervene. For example, my colleagues in the sp subspecialty of arrhythmias have better devices and medications to prevent arrhythmias. Our colleagues in imaging uh, fields have the opportunity and the capacity to identify individuals who are at increased risk for their heart muscle to fail and function and to develop heart failure. And we have treatments that can reduce those risks even though we haven't yet directly addressed the genetic cause of the disease. For some cardiomyopathies, in particular hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the disease thickens the heart muscle in a way that really inhibits normal blood flow out of the heart and to all of the organs. And we can treat that in two ways. We have a superb group of cardiothoracic surgeons who can remove a small piece of that tissue and improve the flow of the blood and reduce symptoms quite dramatically. Or we can do a less invasive procedure through the cardiac catheterization laboratory. In addition, in people who have dilated cardiomyopathy, we know that their heart function is reduced and sometimes they need some additional support. We can introduce a, an assist device to have their heart pump more normally and allow them to go on with their daily living activities, or when very extreme, we can do cardiac transplantation. Both of those treatments are available here at Brigham and Women's Hospital by highly skilled and really dedicated physicians. Traditionally, when we recognize that a person had fart, heart failure, we would take care of that individual alone. Today, when we know that there's a genetic cause for their heart condition, we can then begin to ask whether other family members are also at risk uh, for the condition. In particular, the patient's sisters and brothers and their children. The reason that's important is that sometimes we can recognize that the first presentation of a disease could be quite devastating, an arrhythmia, a heart attack, a stroke, a sudden death event. And if we know that an individual is at risk for a condition, even if they don't have symptoms, we have the capacity to intervene and to prevent those very devastating events. The other reason why it's important is that we know that lifestyle definitely impacts the way in which our heart responds. And in many instances, some very simple preventative measures are very beneficial. For example, we know that adverse events are more common to occur when people are very strenuously exercises, exercising, such as occurs in competitive athletics. And so for young people at risk for these conditions, we sometimes don't allow them to participate as vigorously um, in competitive sports as we do others. There's a lot of work going on in the research laboratories of Brigham and Women's Hospital. And our goal is ultimately to not only define the genetic variants that cause these diseases, but to understand the mechanism and to find new treatments that more directly will take care of the problems that are caused by these genetic variations. We've been able to do that by building prototypes of molecules that prevent some of those uh, processes from reducing heart function 
And those are now being spearheaded through the development of targeted therapies that are specific for genes that are altered uh, by mutations. These treatments aren't yet widely available, but the progress that's been made in the past four to five years is absolutely phenomenal. And within the next couple of years, clinical trials will begin to really understand if these molecules can prevent the development of disease or delay the progression of these genetic forms of heart disease.